This is the first time I've actually drank this lemonade. Really? Yeah. I don't like lemonade. Any reaction? It's decent. It's cold, and I'm thirsty, so. Well, let me pop a cold one for you. But so is everything, right? <laughs> I would drink another. But no way I could finish this. Oh, best lemonade ever. Dude, do not do that noise in the headset again. You heard that? He said, <sighs> it's good. It's good. Sorry, is that better? Yeah, that was good. Chill, man. That's totally for real. Shit, sure. yeah. <laughs> Coming to you live with a man, a myth, a legend, Mantis. Following his 100 free throw stream, Mantis, you know, first words after it. How do you feel after it? Uh, what was the, the recovery process like? My God. First words right there. <laughs> uh, recovery, we're about 95% recovered. My, my wrists are still messed up. Um, my arm's a lot better. Everything else is better. It's just the wrists, all the flicking, you know, all the, mm. and like the way well, I shoot, like I shoot right hand, but my left hand always like flips to the left when I do it. So a lot of this just really messed it up. It's like, it's like playing like Warzone for like 80 hours straight, just with carpal tunnel, whatever you want to call it. I have it. You shoot kind of like Joachim Noah? I uh, almost like, you know, yeah, that's a, that's a really good comparison. I was trying to think of someone. Yeah. Joe Bent Noah, for sure. Yeah. There's no way you know what Joe Kim Noah shoots like. I grew up a Bulls fan. He shoots like this. Just like heave. Yes. Yeah, yeah Joe pretty, Kim Noah. If, if your jumper is getting compared to good Joe Kim Noah, I don't it's think not that's, good. Yeah, it's not a good thing. Good thing it's such free throw, not a jumper. True, I, true. I was free shoot, throw percentage was probably, probably, probably decent. I was shooting better than Steph Curry for like the first 50 hours. I was shooting 92.6%. He was shooting 91.6 all time. Yeah, and think about how much more practice he puts in than you two. True. Oh, he does not do any of it as me. I can tell you right now. Oh, really? <laughs> He's not putting in 82 hours. What's a, what's a normal, I guess, what's a normal, or how'd you prepare for the, the free throw challenge, actually? Uh, it was pretty much basic, just um, shooting just a couple times a week. I would shoot about 200, 300, try and get 100. If I don't, then just call it a break. It was, it was mostly a lot more just to try and get the sponsorships and the stream set up. Or just, I know I'm a shooter. I mean, when you're from Indiana, it's just in you. It's part of your genes, so it's like I already have it. But how can I really, really just keep the stamina and the mentality going? How many shots did you get up overall? Seven thousand seven hundred fifty-three. So, like, at what number of shots do you just kind of look around? And you're like, "Fuck!" Like, my body hurts, my arms hurt. I probably shouldn't keep shooting. I think at seven thousand five hundred, when I was doing that, so at the very end, I was like, "I this is it, Michael Jackson, this is it." <laughs> There had to have been a point earlier, though, in the process. No, I wanted I wanted to hit the 100 so bad, and I knew that people were loving the stream, and I I loved every part of it. It's just I just wanted to hit it, and I'm a very, I'm a very competitive person, and I knew that if I, did, I knew if I didn't hit the 100, I would get shit on, and I am getting shit on now. But people are like, oh, why did you stop? I think you're gonna go, but now we're um, gonna do part two with a bigger budget, so better for us, and then we can do a different gym. It is a little misleading because you said you were locked in the gym until you hit 100 free throws. It came out that you actually weren't. You walked out just skate free. Nothing happened. We yeah, we walked out unfortunately. We, we did we did get kicked out of the gym. Uh, we thought we had it for a week. We had it for four days. The, the guy who owns it, shout out Mark Wise. He uh, he runs an NBA NFL NBA clients NFL clients, and they had people coming in to work out. So we're like we're like we got to yeah, get lost after Tuesday. So mm. we, we do have a backup gym. We do have that ready. It's a matter of a underdog. Let's talk. Mm. We'll get it going again. You said the hardest part was like setting up the sponsorships and just the production side of things. Talk on that a little bit. Um, going from, you obviously say you're a shooter, you know, it's in your blood, you grew up in Indiana, but then now being able to, to monetize, you know, one of your skill sets. Yeah, we, we, wanted not, we didn't want just to be like to just set up a camera and shoot free, but we want to be like an actual. We, we're very inspired by, you know, streamers today like Kai Sinat and Aiden Ross, and they're, they're going above and beyond to make entertaining shows. So like, one of the big things that like we were working on, uh, Joey Chestnut, the seven time, 16 time hot dog eating champion of the world, to uh, sing the national anthem for us and start the show. And the Rockets red flag, the, the ball bursting in air, gay proof through the night. Then we wanted to have celebrities call in, like uh, Pat Bev called in a couple times, and we had. Um, Jersey Jerry from Barcelona Sports, he called in. And we had some like uh, some TikTokers, Dito you know Diddy Bop. Mm -hmm. So he came in with his crew. Like, that was a big push for us too. So we were able to make sure we we're getting the, the most out of all the production and stream and sponsorships and 
not just free throws too. Like people, people loved watching me sleep. I couldn't believe that people loved watching the little taco eating contest. And we had, we had this kid come in. He was uh, just shooting free throws, and I was like, "Dude, I'll give you five hundred dollars if you get a blindfold shot." See, he was, he was missing them. Pitched it up, swished it, lost five hundred dollars. Was like stuff like that. I like, just clips it up, and it's like, "Wow, this is more than just a, you know, casual uh, free throw stream." Hey, where does that relationship with Jack Harlow stem from? Because I saw he tweeted out the link um, seventy hours into the stream or something. Yeah, like, how did. did you guys meet? Like, how did you guys become friends? I love this story. So. 2018 or back 2018 i was going to wabash for a video and can i cut you off one yeah. second noah who works here at lyric lemonade is jack harlow's younger brother so i always love to say this story <laughs> i always love to bring that up before i see no difference yeah. i see it <laughs> 2018 november i'm driving up to wabash for a video my friend also named jack he was playing he played um sundown and dark night in the car like, do you know jack harlow i don't like, oh, know who's that I played that I was like, oh this is really good so then after the video i, I downloaded um loose as that as mistake or his album and then two months, I started listening to him. Two months later, I ran into him at LaGuardia Airport on the way back from Las Vegas. And like, I see this tall, six, three, like white dude standing in the middle of concourse. I'm like, there's no way that's Jack Carlos. He had like maybe 15,000 Twitter followers at the time. Like, he was still like on the come up. This is back when, like, I think, um, who was it? I don't want, I'll just say it now. This, this, was, this was like right when Diddy was like co signing him. <laughs> Whoops. Whoa, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, besides that, Bryson Taylor was also co signing him. So, okay, so, so Bryson Taylor, yeah, not the other guy. Yeah. And uh, I see him like, hey, are you Jack? Like, What's up, man? And yeah, and I was like, hey, I'm Manson. I'm a big fan of you. I just, I just started listening to you. Keep it up. And he was with uh, Urban Wyatt. Shout out Urban Wyatt. They were together. And then after that, um, we took, I took a selfie with them and. I was out. I was fanboy, but I not I just loved who he was. He's just a really good artist, and like he's a really nice guy in person. So I love people who are just really genuine person. That's a big fan of for me. And day later, Urban Wyatt. Uh, this is back when I was working at Barstool Sports. So Urban Wyatt DMs me. He goes, "Hey, you know the pizza guy, Dave? Like we're trying to do a pizza review and uh, for the Derby when he comes by." So I tried to set that up. Didn't happen. Just Dave didn't see the potential in Jack. No one, no one at Barstool saw the potential in Jack besides me. I'll get into that in a second. But uh, he came back for some New York shows a few months later, and I went to his shows and started like I met him again. And we started building little friendships from from me from me going to his shows, and then eventually I brought Jack into Barstool, uh, August 2018, 2019 to promote um, confetti. Mm. And there's a little segment that Barstool does was like you like have a celebrity talk about like, a fun fact, and then they would promote it whatever. So I wanted to get him on that. And we had Jack come in to do that, but Barstool wouldn't release the video because they got, they, I got in trouble for bringing in Jack Harlow in the Barstool Sports. They Crazy. said, who is this white SoundCloud rapper trying to use us for clout? Like, don't ever do this again. <laughs> Three months later, what's poppin' came out, mm. and, you know, Jack's trajectory just skyrocketed. Mm. Yeah. So after that, really, I just, we just been really built a great friendship after that. Mm. And uh, the video did get released, but, like, like months and months later, like, it's just... Way after Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like, come on, man, so... Just keep going because this is only becoming more legendary as time goes by. Nobody wants to see you quit. And I know you got this, brother, so don't let quitting even cross your mind. Finish the job. You got this. All right, here. You can't bring in this white SoundCloud rapper to use us, to use us for clout. How old is the lady that told you that? In like early 40s like late oh, 30s like yeah tough. meanwhile there meanwhile there's a guy and they're actually bringing in soundcloud rappers who like haven't moved the needle at all so <laughs> it's like come on a and r mantis i like that yeah now he's very talented ahead of your time yeah, so yeah. <laughs> he's a great guy i mean i want to promote him he's, he's obviously successful so shout out jack harlow he's, he's an awesome guy yeah you also brought someone else into barstow's office though uh it was you know person owes a date lisa ann uh if was it her oh the other day dude i was all these dates uh, yeah i don't know how many <laughs> dates you had through the office okay yeah, but that, it was the one that you actually got in trouble for for using the bar and using i like whatever but I, yeah you know. i matched with a girl on bumble which is very rare for me that was a very rare moment so i you know i capitalized off of that so i matched with her and then we we're trying to figure out first date spot and then she i go hey do you know about sports sports no no what's that so i showed around the office and then i was like oh right, you want to go get some pizza go to some drinks and she's like well, you have a sponsored New Amsterdam vodka bar in the core. Why would just drink there for free? I was like, oh, yeah, I guess. So, Makes you know, sense. save money, right? Save drinks. And then there was a live stream going on right next to the bar while I was on a date. But I didn't really care because it was like, just like a shooting star moment for me with a girl. So we had a nice little fun time. 
And then uh, the day later, Dave's like, like, why is your deformed mangled brain bringing a girl into the office? Like, I was like, oh, dude, we were just chilling. Like, everyone does it. Just, I, just, I just got caught, apparently, so I did it in front of everyone. <laughs> but no, that was a good date. Uh, besides the fact that she was bragging about like all the IU basketball players she hooked up with, and I was just sitting there like a like a pigeon, like <laughs> just watching. That's so tough. Yeah. yeah, and we didn't we didn't go on a date again after that. Hey, so. bring bring girls through the office. That's like a big unwritten rule, even here. Like I don't think that's really ever happened here. There was maybe once or twice someone got in trouble though. Yeah, yeah. I saw one dude bring like half a frat and sorority into the office on a Saturday, so I thought like one girl wouldn't hurt. Uh, so I was like, yeah, well, just so, but interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I did how you can with girls, you know, it's just... All right, let's backtrack for a second. How did you start with Barstool to begin with, like, at the very beginning? So, back in high school, when I used to bust it to the dance, I was a ball boy for... No, I was a football manager for the Fishers High School football team, and Mm -hmm. I applied to some schools, only got an IUPUI, so then I went to IUPUI. Which is? Indiana University, Purdue University of Indianapolis. Okay. I need a drink after that. <laughs> Say that acronym like everyone knows what that right, is. Right, yeah. yeah. Ooey Pooey. Now it's, now it's Ooey. And there's no more Purdue. They got rid of it. It's, so it's IUI. Wow, they probably stopped cutting the check. So I'm saying, on God. Yeah. And on Baby, too, speaking of that. So I went to IUPUI, and uh, the second week of school, I was doing exercise science. I wanted to be an athletic trainer. I thought that, like, if someone tore their ACL, I'd be, I would know what I would be doing, which is hell no. <laughs> I would get sued if someone tore their ACL. I'd be, I'd be messed up. And uh, the second week of school, there was an opening to be a, a ball boy for the Indianapolis Colts. So I applied for it, got the job, a uh, ball boy the first two years with the Colts. Then Pat McAfee retired, and he joined Barstool Indianapolis. He joined Barstool Sports, mm. which then opened up Barstool Indianapolis in the little branch. And I DM saying, hey, man, if you need help with uh, any videos, I'd be happy to help you. Didn't know what I was going to get into, but he replied to me, gave me an interview, and me and some other interns made videos over the summer. I made a video called Ref Daddy where I put on a referee outfit and like just refereed the jams in the hood. It was great. And uh, built off of that and made some more videos. And after the internship, uh, my junior at IEPUI, I made my own YouTube channel. I pretty much started making fun of IEPUI. Like I'll go to IEPUI basketball game. Like there's like five fans there. I make fun of like all the potholes at IEPUI. Like there's like, and then I do videos around Indianapolis. Kind of built a small little Indiana following. Barstool Sports had a thing called Barstool Idol where you would compete like American Idol, you compete for a full-time job and you got know, audition every day. Uh, I won that competition in New York, won a full-time job with Barstool, worked for two years. Elliot and I met through um, Brandon Kraut. Mm-hmm. We met like, what, 2019, 2020-ish, yeah, during, 2019. A lot of, during a lot of Palooza weekend. Mm-hmm. And I made videos for them. I got laid off from Barstool end of 2020 due to quote-unquote COVID, but they're just letting people off and just saving money and stuff. And then past three and a half years, I've been independent and working with Brandon and Mike. And then our YouTube has been blowing up, so doing really well since like last November. And now we're here. Mm. What was that transition like? Like obviously working with Barstool, massive brand, very recognizable. And then, you know, COVID, a ton of people got laid off, obviously. Yeah. But what was that transition, you know, going from like, all right, I'm creating, creating content for this massive platform to all right, now I'm creating content for myself. It was really... It, I, I was probably crying for two minutes when I got mm. the news, but I was like, oh, wait, I can do whatever I want now. I'm independent. Mm. And like, I knew that would take a lot of work to get back to that. And so I started uh, door dashing and made some money while also starting a podcast. And my podcast wasn't really doing, like, it wasn't projecting. So I was like, I need to switch it up. Um, but Brandon's a big reason why everything's changed. We changed the whole format of like how to create, what kind of vision we want to do. Went from like these like videos of talent. They're kind of, I mean, they're funny, but it's like, there's no, like, it can't, it was not going to go out to everywhere around the world. Like, if I made a video, you'd be like, who's this guy, whatever. But now we're doing videos where like, we're putting on, like, a, a fake RB sandwich, at the, the the Shrek beef sandwich. Or we're we're going to sneak on to an IUPUI basketball game and blah, blah, blah. So now it's, like, really, like, really good ideas. Like, we're kind of going off the almost Mr. Beast meta, you know, mm-hmm. at the source. So we're just trying to be more more creative one-off videos that are going to lead to, like, long-form videos and merchandise and all that so uh, we've been learning a lot from watching other youtubers and just pretty much a lot of, a lot of discipline and uh hard work really you talked about the iupui and checking into the actual live game <laughs> making sure we're, we're getting down seven we're 
So free throws Yikes. coming up for Jalen Counter. I go off to him, go off to him, go off to him. Well, you know I got gotcha. you. Gotcha. Hey, free Draymond, free Draymond. Pretty controversial. Has there ever, what, how many ideas that you've come up with that, you know, sound like great ideas, but once you actually do them, you know, could have ended in, you know, maybe getting arrested? Well, IUP, why well, funny you said that. Um, I'm now a trespass from all IU campuses <laughs> because of that. I can't go to IU, IU Tokemo, IUP, oh, IUP, why, darn, can't go on that campus anymore. Yeah. <laughs> no, not missing anything with that, to be honest. But uh, that's what, I think that's what, the most I've, the farthest I've gone, I haven't been like, you know, like Danny Duncan got arrested or whatever, mm -hmm. any of that. Um, I mean, we're very smart with what can start to, like, what, so what, what, what could happen if we do something like this, edgy stuff, you know? But yeah, I'm, I'm still, I'm still like a bad boy, don't get me wrong. But <laughs> no, you definitely, you, give, you definitely give those vibes. Yeah, I'd say yeah, so. Like too, Will yeah. Smith, Martin Lawrence, I'm a bad boy, you know? Yeah. You know the bad boy song? Yes. <laughs> They're actually dropping a new one. I actually can't wait for it. The trailer looks I'm exciting. I'm a red rat boy. <laughs> you're right, no. So I doesn't know what you're I have no to. idea where you are. It's an old no Lyrical Lemonade video. Yeah. It's oh, really? Pretty on Juice oh, and yeah. uh, Thug. Yeah. Oh, wow. He's got it. He's <laughs> <from>. <laughs> yeah, dig them all, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that shit hard. <laughs> the Pat Bev relationship has been very interesting to see it like blossom, unfold over the last, you know. That's twin. One month or two. Pat Bev, yeah, he's, dude, he's, uh, he's an awesome guy. Like, obviously, I mean, I'm a big NBA fan, so I've known about him forever, but, mm -hmm. you know, you always see, like, how competitive and how, like, he's he's, he's crazy guy on the court, you know? He, he's, mm -hmm. he's just insane, but, like, calmest, nicest guy on the planet uh, off the court. Hit you when you get it, buddy. Keep going. I'm with you. When we, uh, when we win this, I'm going to frame uh, your jersey. I'm going to send it to you. Say less. I love it. Less. Mm -hmm. So he's really cool. Shout out, Pat Bev. Have you had a conversation on who has better basketball, Indiana or, Ch or Indianapolis or Chicago? You want to get into this, huh? <laughs> I just want to see what your you two said because I'm sure it could be a long list of yeah, you know NBA uh, players. Pat Bev's uh, Chicago. Where did he go to high school again? You guys know, know, but I know he averaged. Like, I know his average was because everybody always talks about what his average is in the NBA, mm -hmm. and then they always go back and bring up his average in high school, and he was just like dropping thirty and mm -hmm. you know d dropping people off. But um, obviously, both have great history of basketball. So I just wanted to see if you guys had that conversation or that you know discussion yet. No, we haven't. We just talked about we just talked about uh, like what we had for lunch the other day, <laughs> and then talked about like what we're doing this weekend, like nothing like that. But Indiana basketball, you know, they got we got Greg Oden, Mike Conley, um, Yogi Ferrell, Yogi Ferrell, <laughs> shit me. Uh, <laughs> How do you feel about the current state of the Colts? Oh God, being a Colts fan is a roller coaster because you know it's like you get so much hype in the off season. We've been the best team in the division, then we always finish like fifth, like five hundred or whatever. Mm -hmm. But you know, of course, Anthony Richardson, our sweet prince, being injured, uh, that really just sunk the boat. Then mm -hmm. it makes me scared that we signed Joe Flacco. It just makes me feel like he's going to get hurt again. Then we have Joe Flacco play the whole season. I feel like every year we have some like old backup quarterback just be our starter. Yeah, Philip you guys Rivers. Do. Carson Matt Ryan, Ryan. Oh, Gardner Minshew last year, right? Gardner Minshew, Matt Ryan. That was that was a bad year. Yeah. That was a bad year, brother. <laughs> that was scary hours for. <laughs> Shout out Drake. Yeah, <laughs> that was. Oh my god. And the back to back years, I want to say, you you were one game away from to make him. You had to win the last game. We had to I beat the to, Texans, bro. We couldn't so, beat the Texans. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, CJ no, they look great yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we made them. We made them look like the eighty-five Bears. Shit, mm -hmm, CJ yeah. Stroud slinging it. Um, but even too, like we another thing, our general manager Chris Ballard, like he's just he never makes any off-season moves. Like he's more worried about signing our, our really nice nice locker room guys, very polite guys, instead of like signing like super superstars or whatever. Mm. So we're pretty much the same team almost the past two or three years. But now we are banking on Anthony to be healthy. So you know that's our optimism right there. Have you connected with him at all since he got to Indy? Yeah, Anthony. I, I met him at Kroger. <laughs> like, mm, uh, really? In August. He, uh, I'm walking around getting some mac and cheese. So we're about to grill some burgers with my mom. And I see this dude like picking up some eggs. I'm like, there's no way that's Anthony Richardson Pulse. He just stands up like, oh, that's him. So then mm. I was like, uh, I had a video series where I like, see someone like, wearing like, a random jersey. I'd be like, holy shit, it's him. So like, it was actually him. So I was like, yo, do I want to do a video with you? So I pull a camera on him. I'm like, holy shit, it's Peyton Manning. Holy shit, it's Peyton Manning. And that blew up, and <laughs> mm -hmm. then he, they all loved it. And then just we hung out a couple times. But uh, I mean, he's, he's a really, really nice guy. So yeah. I really hope he stays healthy. He, he deserves it. We need him. To, we, we need another. Him and Halliburton 
soon to be Caitlin Clark, like the, you know, the sports figures of Indianapolis. Mm. So it's a, uh, and they're all great people. Tyree's a great guy too, but Ant's the man. Mm. So hopefully, hopefully healthy season will be great. Where are some of your uh, Indian, Indiana legends, pro mm. legends uh, growing up, whether it be like Peyton Manning or um, who's basketball? Danny Granger. Reggie Danny, Ma- Danny Granger. <laughs> he was one of those wow. 2K. Yeah, he was yeah, tough. He, he was broken in 2K. P- PG. Uh, but, like, yeah, growing up, who who were some of the athletes that you looked up to from, Indi- from Indianapolis? Hayden, Marvin Harrison, Reggie Wayne, Marvin, yeah. Bob Sanders. Bob if, if, Sanders. If he wasn't hurt. Oh. oh, my gosh. Oh, my. There was a point where, because I'm, like, a 5'8 safety corner. Yeah. There was a point where I was, like, I oh, wanted to. You built like me, for real, 5'8. Uh, <laughs> Shit. There was a point I wanted to be, like, Bob Sanders. But then, like, I, I saw the way he played, and then once I got to high school, I could do what I could run around and hit people like that. But then when I got to college and I saw, like, how big the running backs were, and I was like, I cannot get over 200 pounds and just run down run downhill and just hit people with my face mask. I was like, I got I to gotta find some a new inspiration. Yeah, you're setting yourself up for injury, which happened to him. He had the, yeah. uh, those neck problems and all that. Um, oh, those sorry. guys, yeah, Danny Granger, gosh. Throwback Thursday. Hey, you think um, it was about to take a turn? When you were a kid, Marvin Harrison was uh, obviously a star for the Colts. You think? Remember when he had the whole murder? Uh, yeah, the bat. And the, yeah, yeah, all that yeah. stuff. You think he did it? I mean, you know, it's, we're, the way I see it, we're here to win games. Yeah. You know, we're here to win. So whatever happens off the field. It, it was like pre-social media. That shit all just got swept under the rug. Oh, I know. Yeah. What a, what a, what an interesting. Well, you know, the whole Peyton Manning at Tennessee, the whole athletic trainers. I've never apparently, heard Apparently, he was yeah, sexually that. harassed like trainers, allegedly. During his college days, we still drafted him. And I looked how he turned out. So I mean, who, yeah. you never who knows. Never Peyton Manning's ever. a legend down there. I had a recruiting visit to Tennessee, and we stayed at the Peyton Manning Hotel. And he's got a hotel. What right. is he's got a hotel? Yeah, it's like on top of the hill, and it's really really nice. Uh, they took care of us there too. Damn. I almost wanted to go to Tennessee just for that reason. Mm. Is a hotel ship with a big ass forehead just like that? Yeah. <laughs> Every time he checked in, Omaha, Omaha. Yeah. Do you remember that Super Bowl? Do you remember the Colts Super Bowl versus the Bears? Do you remember that one? I do. Do you remember Elliot? Do you remember Elliot? Did I, uh, yeah, I was 10 years old. I think that was the, I cried. I cried as like I a cried. kid. Yeah. Were you nervous draw. after the, the kickoff? Yeah. Return? Devin has to yeah. watch the back. <laughs> Very nervous. The third play of the first offensive drive, uh, Peyton Manning threw a pick to Chris Harris, and I thought it was over. Yeah, and, I thought uh, it was too. I think, I think Cedric Benson maybe fumbled in the fourth quarter. Mm, Something happened, That's a man. throwback. Dude. That's a throwback. But no, RIP. I, I think Bob Sanders, Sanders popped uh, the running back for the fumble. I'm pretty sure it was him. Man, that was a terrible day. And life as a Bears fan hasn't really been that sweet since. But Caleb Williams, you know, got a little bit of hope now. Hopefully uh, something happens there. If Caleb Williams – if you guys – okay. There's a bet right here. I'll say it live. If you guys go to the playoffs this year, I will paint my fingernails for one week. Okay. That's just a one-way bet. Like, yeah. What if, th- there's we, no we opposite really, They don't get that? anything out of that. Yeah. No, I said it straight up. All right, I, was cool. a, I was a good guy. Nah, I'll sure, court. I'll take yeah. it. Why not? <laughs> you don't need to do anything. You, be, you, be, you Bears have been, been through enough. I'll, 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 I'll do it for you guys. <laughs> Bro, I think the Bears are going to be nice this year. Like, they got all the my team. Aside, they, they got, got a good defense. They got, they got the team. They just got Keenan Allen. For a fourth-round mm-hmm. pick? Come on. DeAndre Swift. No more Kirk Cousins. He's in Atlanta. Yeah, I mean, at this point, it's just organization and coaching, right? I would say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Matt Eberflus is like all of a sudden a sex symbol. I don't know if you guys have seen that now, but like <laughs> completely know. is, dude. It's a big sports story right now in Chicago. But he, uh, that's all you have to talk about in Chicago. Um, I would want to talk. I want to talk about your brand, uh, that boy Bent. Um, how did that come about? And you know, what made I, we can talk about your story and just you know your upbringing, things like that. But uh, how did that brand you know come to fruition? Yeah, I've, I'm I'm bent. Obviously, I have I have an undiagnosed physical condition. There's no name for what I have. Um, it's not like I have all my muscles and bones. Not scoliosis, not anything like that. But they just couldn't figure. Like when I popped out, they just couldn't figure out what the hell is going on. So I think around probably at least, at least college. Um, just I would be, I, I love playing basketball, and I would shoot like I, you can tell by what when I shoot basketball, I'm really bent. So. Around college time, I think someone just yelled. My friend Samson, he just yelled, that boy bent after I hit a three. I loved it. And then we kind of built off of that. But I think it really, it, that really came back when the whole Barstool free throw stream came in. Because people at Barstool would be like, oh, that's the bent guy. And I was like, that boy bent. But it's not just sub. Like, 
uh, I just another way people know me. I say, oh, it's Mantis. Oh, it's the Ben guy. Oh, it's the uh, IEPUI guy. It's whatever. It's another layer of people how, how they see me or know me from videos or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's kind of hard though. That boy bent. Yeah, that boy. Yeah. That boy, anyone, anyone should be bent, you know? You can be bent. You, yeah. you can be bent. Like, it, used, it used to be a like, saying. I don't know if it could have been a Cleveland thing, but uh, you got me bent. Like you, you got, got me, me. Like you got me messed up. Like you, you ever heard that before? Somebody say you got me bent? Never. Uh, it's, no. And it'd be like, if I told you like right now to just go like run down to the car and grab something for me and you'd be like, nah, you got me bent. It's like, like I'm not, you I got w- me you twisted. You got me, you know, messed up. I would say, no, you got me effed up twin. That's what I would say. Yeah. Well, I was a kid when I was saying it. So, uh, you know, wasn't allowed to say that, but. Yeah. Um, Good parenting. Now, you know, <laughs> starting as a content creator, like picture yours, you know, like, and I feel like when we grew up nowadays, if a kid is growing up, you know, being a content creator might be number one on their list. Um, but like when we were growing up and you obviously have a love for basketball coming from Indiana and just, you know, the work that you've put already put in into the sport. Um, but you said you also had, you know, a undiagnosed uh, disability. Uh, no one else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I, but so maybe like sports wasn't something that you could really participate in at the like getting to the professional level. So when did, I guess, content creator come in about or what or what were you looking at before you even got into content creating? Well, before I say that, I, I've always been told that I mean, my dad never ever wanted me to play like uh, high school sports or like even like recreational sports. But fun fact, he said that I'm actually an announcement right now before it goes viral, not viral, before it goes out. I'm playing in the TBT, the basketball tournament this summer. I got assigned to the Valparaiso crew, so I'm actually playing for them on ESPN this summer. That's so fine. My first professional sports team ever, or not semi pro, whatever it is, but mm. that's really cool. But before that, uh, yeah, I wanted to be like I wanted to be like an athletic trainer. Then I want when I was a ball boy, I wanted to be a ball boy forever uh, for sports team. Pretty much worked behind the scenes of sports, but then I started really showcasing. I ever started just going hard on being a content creator, YouTuber, and I love this a lot more. So it's, it's really now it's really starting to pay off, and people are loving it. So 